Hello. Welcome to Car Expert YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe to get update. Competition has forced the 911 GT3 RS to prioritize lap times over driving enjoyment. The 911 Carrera line has softened, now full of GT cars rather than the wild children of yore. Turbocharging is hitting the rear engine Porsche en masse. All of this gave Porsche Motorsport a vacuum of emotion and purity to fill with just 991 examples of its glorious 911R, a machine focused on putting unadulterated feel and enjoyment back into driving. This car makes no apologies for its ugly fuel economy number because, well, there are more economical 911s you can choose from. In European testing, it consumes 13.3 liters slash 100 kilometers, which is equivalent to 18 miles per gallon. EPA fuel economy figures aren't available yet. One of the big reasons for the thirst is the sheer power and revs the engine generates, but the other is the six-speed manual gearbox, which get right built especially for this car. Fifth gear is underdriven and sixth has a ratio of 0.88 to 1, which is between fifth and sixth on the 911's seven-speed manual. There's no freeway hauling ratio because, Porsche Motorsport insists, six speeds are better for fun and, besides, calling the extra overdriven seventh gear saves a whole 2.2 pounds. The engine cranks over with an angry gruffness and, dynamic mounts active or not. It can leave the 911 R sitting there with the body rocking left and right at idle. The almost non-existent sound deadening allows the 4.0 liter 6 to go well beyond delivering noise. Every single tremble from the motor instantly snaps at nerves in the fingers, toes, and anything else inside. As you drive, you realize you're sitting in front of not one engine, but three of them lurking in one piece of alloy. First up is the commuting engine, which softly but strongly pushes the car around in traffic at up to 3,500 revolutions per minute, and it's surprisingly good at it. Then the engine's valving hits the man cam at 3,500 revolutions per minute or so and it changes timbre in depth, becoming a Porsche flat 6 of legend, full of metallic brass and urgency, and governed by a stiff throttle spring. It's strong enough to live here most of the time, and it's nice enough to use the torque peak as a de facto power peak, because it's still going to be a pretty quick car like that. And you won't miss out on any of that honeyed creaminess of the engine's power delivery, its glorious induction noise, the chirping of its throttle bodies as they open to full throttle, or the timbre changes as the revs rise. But then the thing rips past 6000 revolutions per minute and it all changes civility and sophistication disappear. The final 2,500 revolutions per minute or so are unfettered, incandescent, screaming rage. This doesn't sound like a flat 6 Porsche anymore, doesn't sound like a V8 or V12 either. It just sounds like a charging pre-gunpowder army, concentrated into one 4.0 liter ball of fury. Somehow this magnificent piece of mechanical theater doesn't overshadow the rest. You don't have to drive flat out to get enjoyment from this car, either, because the 911R immerses you in its every breathing moment, whether you're at 2000 revolutions per minute or 8000. It's happy to just be moving and you can't escape the glow of that glee. If that all sound a bit much, it's not. This car is intuitive. The 911R delivers the special, rare feeling of the driver being utterly at one with every piece of the machine. You release the brake pedal like it's part of your foot, tweak the wheel like your hand is touching the surface of the road, accelerate away with a throttle pedal that knows the difference between 6201 revolutions per minute and 6202. This is the Porsche that lives up to Porsche's hype. If you love driving, and you can find one, this is the 911 to own, cherish, and hold on to until the last drop of the world's gasoline is burned in its naturally aspirated flat 6.